I want Nadia to love me well. It wasn't to actually just to charge and say, you know what, I'm going to believe what God says. Exactly. Just take it as his word. We make it complicated. <laughs> no, we really do. And you know, the good thing is, um, I think it's so exciting, is that God's love never wavers. It doesn't go Amen. up, it doesn't go down, I'm going to on. It doesn't go up or down. We, our emotions kind of go up and down like this, but God's it stays the same. And it doesn't matter whatever you were going on in your life, God loved you. He wasn't angry with you with your doubts and your fears and all those things. That's right. He was he was not angry with you. Just like he wasn't angry with Thomas. That's right. Even though he came to him with his doubts and all of those things. Because you know what? He understands our weaknesses. He came to this earth just to walk just like we walked. So that we would know that he understands where we're at and what we're going through day by day. He's not just some far off God, but he knows what we're going through. And you know what? He meets us where we're at. I just love Amen. that. Don't you love that? Yes. And he meets us right where we're at, whatever we need. And you know, Thomas needed to see his hands and his and his scarred hands and his side. And you know, let's think about this for a second. Thomas was one of the disciples. He had stayed with Jesus like day in and day out for three years. You know, Jesus had told him what he planned to do. He had been told what um, was going to happen. But you know what? Like I spoke on last week, the disciples were blinded because they were so set on what they thought that. God was going to do that they missed what he was actually doing. Yeah. You know? And so, but, and yet, so here's, here's this man, he he's actually knows, and then when the disciples tell him, you know, hey, Jesus came back, you think he'd be like, yes, that's awesome. And instead of what he did is he's like, I'm not believing until I see the scars in his hands. Proof is in the pudding. Proof is in the pudding. And I just think, you know, I think I kind of identify with that. I don't know about you, but... And, but, you know, but Jesus didn't say, if I were Jesus, I think I would have been like, dude, you know, I spoke to you time after time after time. I, you do this to Exactly. Me. I told you what was going to happen. What do you mean you're not going to believe unless you see me? Come on. Right? I and mean, you've seen all these miracles that I've done, and now you're not believing. But he didn't do that. He said, Tom is here. Touch my hand. Touch my hand. And that's what Jesus does for you. If you've got doubts in your in your mind or in or your fears, you know, it's okay. Tell Jesus because he's going to accept you. And he will take you and he's going to show you. He reaches us exactly where we're at. Whatever we need is what he gives to us. He will speak to you the way that you need to be heard. Amen. Amen? And, 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 and the thing too is we don't ever have to be afraid that he's going he's gonna to be angry at us. If we're turning to him, he loves us. He loves us. In fact, he loves the entire world. And he took all the wrath that was due us, all those wrong things in our life because we deserve punishment. Jesus took every ounce, every ounce. Can you believe that? Hallelujah. You know? Yeah. And every single part, he took every bit of that wrath. And so there's no more wrath expended on us. And so God is there. He wants to love you. And it's because of him that he's. We, like Pastor Ron shared earlier, we are now the righteousness of God in Christ. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, we read, He made him who knew no sin to be sinned on our behalf so that he might become... Oh, so that we... Sorry, you're right. So that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen? But I, I don't think that we... I think we miss... Where is it? So he, he who knew no sin. This is Jesus, the holy God. And yet he became sin. He didn't just take it on himself. He became sin. It's kind of like if we dumped ourselves in a vat of sewage, you know, and then kind of put ourselves in a garbage truck on top of everything else. Okay? I mean, just think of how yucky that is. And yet Jesus endured that for us so that we might be right with God. I know that. That is a mind-boggling statement right there. I mean, if you think about it, that verse is saying that when we come to Christ, right. we, that so to speak, like you just said, kind of filled with our sewage, He cleanses us, and then we become that righteousness. That holy righteousness, heavenly righteousness, we become that. If you stop and think about that, that is truly a mind-boggling statement, but that's what Jesus did for us on the cross, and that's who we are in Christ. And like you said, there is no right to pour upon us. Oh, exactly. And I think too, we think we have, to, we have to really work on our faith. We have to work ourselves up. You know, we're not like Mother Teresa or Billy Graham or something. Or all the saints. Yeah, exactly. Or whoever it is. And we think, well, you know, well, we just have this little faith. Remember, Jesus meets us where we're at. And he didn't come for those that didn't need him. He came for those. I mean, he came for the sick. He came for those that need him. 
Um, he came for those who struggle. So if you have a struggle in your life, let me just tell you that Jesus came for you. And I'm pretty safe to say I bet you everyone here has a struggle. <laughs> exactly. I mean, he came to give hope to those who have no hope. And for those that need deliverance. I don't know about you, but I've needed deliverance. Amen. All right, for those who need redemption, he's there. He's able to restore what has been taken from you. Because you know, as we walk through this life, there's things that have been taken from us, right? Our peace, sometimes um, just all sorts of things. But I want you to know that Jesus is a big God, and he wants to restore to you. And in Deuteronomy 30, verses 3 and 4, we can read, God, your God, will restore everything you lost. Hallelujah. Everything. He'll have compassion on you. He'll come back and pick up the pieces from all the places where you were scattered. No matter how far away you end up, God, your God, will get you out of there. Isn't that amazing? I just love that. He's going to pick up all the pieces. So no matter where you found yourself, you found yourself and you've wandered far off, you don't have to worry. He's going to gather you back all up and he's going to restore all those things that have been taken from you. He will restore those things. Amen. Because he's such a good God and he loves us. We don't have to be afraid. And you know, I think the knocks and the bangs of life, they come and they knock us out, right? But he's going to come and those wounds, they hurt us. They wound our heart. They damage us. They damage us. They, bring, they give us doubt. They give us pain. But God has come to give us hope. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's come to give you hope. <laughs> And he wants to rescue us from that mess that we've made. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. He wants to rescue us, right? And he only asks us to believe. That's the whole thing. We, we make it complicated. Exactly. We want to go and clean ourselves. Exactly. With that sewage. You know? Exactly. When we just get our filthy rags and make a bigger mess. And it's like, it's not what he does. He doesn't ask us to do anything. He just asks us to believe. Just like that video said at the end. Just believe. Yeah, you know, it's an important point that you bring up because there's so many Christians out there today that I know have left the church because they feel unworthy. Exactly. They feel they're too dirty. They feel they have too many secret sins or whatever. And so what they do is they leave and, you know, I'm going to go and cleanse myself first. Exactly. And then when I come back, that doesn't work. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Because 1 John 1, 7 says, but if we walk in the light and he's in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, Amen. It doesn't say our good works. No, it doesn't. it doesn't say we could quit drinking or smoking <laughs> or whatever it is. It just simply does not say that. We complicate it. Exactly. It says that the blood of Jesus is what cleanses us. That's powerful. Amen. And, and then he, does, he doesn't leave us. He loves us so much. He doesn't leave us like that. Right. He comes in and he, um, he cleanses us. And he's the one that changes. We don't have that power, but he is able to change us. And I think, you know, just like Thomas, we have doubts, don't we? Awesome. Even us, right? Yeah. <laughs> Even as pastors? If we're honest, yes. If we're honest, exactly. We weren't supposed to say that. Oh, we weren't? We weren't. Well, okay. it's up now. <laughs> all right. But, you know, if we're honest, we all have doubts. Every single one of us. But, you know, it's not a surprise to God, and he knows. Amen. He knows where we're at, and he still loves us. Isn't that amazing? Oh, he still loves us, and he accepts us right where we are. He accepts us. And we, and all we have to do is accept him. And I want you to know that if you're here today, Jesus has given you an opportunity. God's given oh, you an opportunity right now to come to know him. Yeah. It's really very simple. He wants to give you that opportunity. He wants you to know him. He already knows you, but he wants you to receive him. And he, I want you to know that this today, you have an opportunity to know this God that can change your life, that can give you hope, that can bring healing in your life and bring restoration. But you know, it's not just for that. If, if you're a Christian and you know what, you've had some struggles in your life, I want you to know that Jesus gives hope. That's why he rose again today. And so whatever that struggle is, whatever that thing is, you know, I think sometimes even as Christians, we get so caught up with the things that are going bad in this world and we get discouraged and we have forgotten that God is our light and he is our hope. And he is with us, and he's there too. And if you've gone it off the way, like say you knew you know him, but you haven't been following him, you know what? Just like he said, he will bring you back. You can't cleanse yourself. You can't cleanse okay. yourself, and he'll bring it all back together. But you know, I think it would be helpful if you could share just a little bit about how you came to have faith in God. Well, actually, that's uh, quite appropriate here. In uh, John 20, it's actually 
Uh, let's read that about Thomas again. But Thomas, one of the twelve called the diamonds, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples were saying to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see his hands, the imprint of the nails, and put my finger into the place of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And further it says, After eight days his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors had been shut, and, <coughs> shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach out here your finger and see my hands. And put your hand to my side, and do not be unbelieving, but be believing. Amen. And then Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord, oh my God. And that's exactly what happened to me. I was 17 years old, and I was really searching for God. In fact, I was searching for God, or at least looking for an answer, since I was about five years old. Yeah. I remember that I was a kid, and growing up in Lima, Peru, running around my house, and I knew that I was doing bad things. I was stealing candy and being mean to my brothers and sisters. I have seven, seven of them, by the way. So you can imagine the wars that I grew up in. I don't even want to think about it. But you know what? I just knew. God just was convicting me that there, I knew that I was doing bad things. I'm like, you know what? One day I got to answer for this. And incredible, at that age, the Holy Spirit was convicting me. And, and I think that I, I'm convinced with a shadow of a doubt. A lot of us worry about the people in the remote jungles or whatever. You know what? God is touching them. Just as he was touching me in Lima, Peru, at five years of age, drawing me to himself. And so finally, at the age of 17, I was invited to a Bible study. The pastor read this very passage. And no one knew, but in my mind, God came through loud and said, Martin, you're like Thomas, you got to believe. <laughs> and, I, and I said, like Thomas, I said, God, I believe. And, and that's it. Yeah. it that, that exchange that took maybe all 10 seconds changed my life forever. Absolutely. And I like how he came to you like... Like you needed to hear it. It might not be the same as somebody else, but That's he right. came as, as he spoke to you like you needed to hear from him. That's right. The way that I need to hear, when I need to hear. And I believe that God's speaking to you all here right now as well. And you know what? You can receive Christ right where you are.